Yeah, hello guys. I welcome back you to the new screencast on Python programming. So in this screencast, I would like to tell you uh, what exactly Python is, how Python can be used, uh, why Python is not too popular in 2000, and uh, why it is popular now. So this is the agenda for this screencast. So let us talk about uh, what is Python. So uh, Python is a general purpose dynamic high level and interpreted programming language as we all know that uh, python is one programming language with some features so this uh, this statement has uh, it states that it is a general purpose language as well as dynamic language why it is called dynamic language why it is called dynamic type language yeah we will be uh, we will be going into the app in the coming videos in features of python we will be talking about that what it is why it is dynamically type language why it is called as high level language why it is called as interpreted programming language python is easy to use yet it is powerful and it is versatile scripting language yeah it is very powerful because it is having huge set of libraries that is that is the reason why it is getting very popular and powerful Due to huge set of libraries, due to fewer fewer lines of code we write, that is the reason why that is becoming uh, Python more popular. So Python works on different different platforms. So Python can work on a Windows platform. Python can work on Mac OS. Python can work on Linux operating system. So it we can work on different platforms. That is the reason why Python is called as independent language, where you can write program once. You can write in Windows machine and you can execute this Python program anywhere in any operating system, in any, any other operating system. That is the reason why Python is called as uh, independent language, independent programming language or platform independent language. And the Python virtual machine where the, all the programs will be executed, that is, that is dependent. Okay now. So Python has simple syntaxes uh, similar to English language. So uh, Python, if you, if you if you observe uh, some uh, syntaxes, uh, the, it is very similar to English language. For example, if a is greater than b, then if a is greater than b, print two. So here, if you observe that, it is very similar to English language. So Python has uh, uh, the syntaxes that allows developers to write programs in with fluer lines than some other programming languages. So as I have already mentioned you, if you want to write a C program, it requires huge lines of code. But whereas in Python, it requires very fewer lines of code. Python can be treated in both procedural way as well as object oriented way. As we know that uh, Python language can be uh, treated in procedural way. We can write functions and we can execute the program as well as we can write the classes as well as we can write the objects and we can execute the program. So this is called as both functional and object oriented programming language. So what can we do with the Python language? So we can do web applications with Python, we can do desktop GUI applications, we can do software development, we can do scientific and numeric applications, we can do applications of images, we can do 3D, 3D CAD applications, we can do video or audio based applications, we can do console based applications. So what not, we can do everything with Python. That is what the slide is telling us. So Python is a language in which we can do whatever we want. So let us talk about web applications. In web applications, how this Python language is used. So, as you as we know that uh, a web application can be broadly classified into three classes. So web application will have front end technology, back end technology, as well as business logic. Let me tell you with a simple example. Let us consider Facebook as an example. We daily use Facebook or WhatsApp. 
So the interface which you can see is called as front end the interface. So you can post some posts, right? So you can see some messages. There is chat window. All these are called as the front end technology. So this is called interface, front end interface. So this front end interface can be developed using all these languages that is front end technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, Angular, etc. So there are many front end technologies where you can develop where you can develop the uh, front end you front end interfaces are UIs that is called user interfaces. So uh, if you type one message then in WhatsApp to your friend then automatically this message will be gone to him. If you delete some messages then uh, if you restore that messages then automatically you will be getting all these messages. How you are getting that messages? The messages what you are typing that will be stored in some databases that is WhatsApp databases. So we are maintaining some databases to store all the data whatever we want. Let us take Facebook example. If you type something, uh, if you register for that account, if you, if you newly register for account, then automatically all this data whatever you type, this will be stored in the Facebook data. Let me show you practically what is going on. So uh, this is Facebook. Uh, this is Facebook UI where we know that. So if I type, uh, if you are if you are new to this Facebook, what you will do initially, you will create an account. So the whatever you are seeing, this is called user interface. This user interface, this uh, sign up form or login form, this will be designed using front end technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap. Okay now, now you are uh, if you are new to the account. If you are new to this Facebook, what you will do? You will create an account right using uh, you, you will enter some uh, what some of the details. Yes, all you will enter all the details. And finally, what you will do? You will click on sign up button. After clicking sign up button, you will you 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 had registered right now. You got registered to the Facebook. So after clicking sign up button, all this data, all this data, whatever you have entered, this will be stored in the database. This is called front end technology. This is called back end technology. So using back end technology, what you will do is you will store the data, whatever you are giving through front end that will be stored in the back end. Okay, now this is clear, right? So we are using front end technology. We are using back end technology. Now, where this Python is used. So let me have let me open into one account by entering some details. So I have entered some uh, email ID and my password. So now what I am getting see here I am getting my phone number what I have entered is wrong or password is incorrect. So all these type of uh, uh, some business logics all this kind of business logic so how it is verifying how it is verifying first the details whatever you are entering here the details whatever you are entering here is being stored and the details which you are sent to the database while you are registering that will be collected and this both will be this both will be checked in the python file Okay, now all for writing business logic, for writing business logic, we will be, we will be using Python. It is clear. So if I entered my credentials, uh, see here guys, 9177047501 is my user ID and I am typing my password. See here, now I am entering. Now I am logging into my Facebook. How it is happening? It is happening through validation. How I am validating? I am getting data from the Facebook's Facebook database. And while I was entering here, I am getting this data, enter data, and I am getting da Facebook data, database data, and I am matching here. When when these both got matched only, 
then only i am entering into my facebook otherwise i am not entering into my facebook so to validate all these for writing all these cases we will be using business logic for writing all these business logic we will be using python guys this is where python is used in website design next uh, every application we take it follows client type, client server architecture guys so if you consider one website it follows client server architecture what is client server architecture so uh, if you uh, let me tell you uh, with alignment terminology where you can understand what exactly the client server architecture is so if you go for a hotel uh, if you want to eat something uh, then what you will do waiter come to you and he will ask for your order what you will do yeah, yeah yeah you can say i want biryani to the waiter then what waiter will do waiter will take the order and he will take this to the uh, chef whoever cooks that so what chef will do chef will prepare whatever the waiter said and uh, he will give that biryani whatever you have ordered to the waiter now again waiter is giving mm, the waiter will uh, get back that the biryani to you and he will give biryani to you you will eat that yes or no so same like that here in client server architecture also here client is the client is your here in the example what i demonstrated client here you are the client here you are the client here you are sending some request to the you are sending some request to the server here you are sending some request to the server here the server is kitchen yes or no here the server is processing your request yes or no here you are ordering the biryani there your order is being processed there your order is being processed there the biryani is prepared there so after processing your request uh, the response will be given to the client so here you are giving the request to the server server is processing the request and finally the output of the server again it will be given to the client okay this is called client server architecture so in websites if you open facebook then the client is you are the uh, the user who is using the browser is called as client there you are entering the details and the details will be that whatever you are entering uh, you are requesting the server to get the details and there you are validating that this is what every website is following the client server architecture client is the person who is using the mobile you are sending some request to the server which is located at remote location so uh, we don't know where is google server google server is present in california or america so you are sending request from here to there and that request is being processed and we are getting the we are getting back the results this is what uh, the every website is following client server architecture in this client server architecture to send all these we will be using python for writing business logic guys so it the python is also providing us frameworks like django pyramid flask etc it is used to design and develop web applications so as we now we are learning languages to implement the business logics so using some using python they are uh, the there is some enhanced versions they are called as frameworks where our work will be easy if you use that frameworks so for python there are some frameworks like django there are some frameworks like flask there are some frameworks like pyramid which follows mvc architecture model view controller yeah we will go into depth in the further classes about uh, the frameworks so if you want to develop uh, uh, the multi touch applications like android like you want to develop a small apps for mobile you have some uh, there is some library called as kiwi library where you can develop mobile applications so there are um, there is time player this is a video based application uh, video based application 
which was developed using python there is uh, there are some flavors of python in the in one one more flavor is ipython so this ipython is used to develop a console based applications this is what we can do with python now we had a question uh, why python is not too popular in 2000 but it is trending now as we know that uh, day by day uh, we are addicted to the very simple syntaxes not very complicated syntaxes so developers are interested to write programs with flow lines because while they were developing softwares there are thousands thousands of lines so to minimize that if you if, if you java there may be thousands of lines to minimize that uh, everyone is expecting a uh, very everyone ex expecting uh, the language with fewer lines of code that is the reason why one of the reason why python is trending now the second reason is let us go on to the uh, past in 1900s so in 1900s we had some data huge 1900s 1950s there uh, we are having lots of data here we are having lots of data in 90s 90s we are 1990s 1980s we will be having lots of data but we are not having proper tool to uh, proper tool to process that data let us consider facebook data facebook was uh, invented long back now uh, in in middle there were lots of users was creating day by day day by day day by day facebook users are increasing day by day so at that time in uh, in 1900s in 2000s we had data but we we don't have machines we don't have that much processors to process the data to process the data there is huge amount of data there is terabytes of data there is petabytes of data but there is no proper processors there is no proper servers to process the data at that time now in 2020 the servers are increasing day by day the processors we are getting multi core processors we can process any kind of data we had if we had lots of amount of data at that time we don't have process we don't have the tool to process the data now we are having tool to process some will be are having hardware components all the hardware components like processors servers now nowadays that is the reason why we now we are having hardware tools we need to have some software component to process that to process that large amount of data now python is a language which is used to process that large amount of data using all that servers this is the language where we can write small fewer lines of code and data is increasing tremendously that is the reason why python is trending now not in 2000s is this clear so large amount of data is present in 2000s and 2020 but now we are having all the components to process that data at that time we don't have that much tools to process the data now it is pro trending that time the uh, that time python is not trending that's it thank you for watching this video guys if you, if you like this video please share to your friends and follow us on techmahair insta page that's it thank you guys